Um, third, we want this to be a participatory event. Um, the chat is open. Um, please feel free um, to use it. Um, there's a note from Lauren Gonzalez in the chat, but she cannot hear anything. Could I please get some confirmation that you guys can hear me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with that important issue settled, we're going to move on to three welcomes. We're going to hear from Tonya Akins, who is president and CEO of the Howard County Library System. Then we're going to hear from Inlaces uh, co-founder and president, Patricia Silva. And lastly, we're going to hear from Howard County County Executive, Dr. Calvin Ball. And if you each could please just uh, enter the, the speaking moment voluntarily when it's your time. So starting with Tonya. Thank you so very much, Katie. Thank you to everyone joining us on this longest night of the year to recall, reflect, and remember those lost to COVID-19 and those facing obstacles as a result of the pandemic. Honoring lives well-lived is a ritual that transcends social and cultural differences. Tonight we gather with knitted hearts to remember family and friends near and far, as well as the neighbors with whom we build community. Some dedicated their lives to military service but could not receive a customary military memorial or burial. Others made our world a better place through their profession, with their laughter and warm smiles, or through their love and generosity, each life precious, irreplaceable, and missed. We hope this gathering provides you the opportunity to remember and honor those whose lives and memories you hold dear. And while we are together virtually, we hope you feel the support of your community and those in attendance this evening. HCLS is honored to partner with Inlace on the Remembering Remembrance Tree Memorials and tonight's Remembering Together event. The next voice you will hear is that of Patricia Silva, co-founder and president of Inlace. Thank you for your partnership, Patricia, and for seeding the idea that brought us here this evening. Thank you, Tonya. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hello everyone, thank you. Thanks to all of you for being here tonight. Um, as Tonya uh, introduced me, my name is Patricia Silva. I am one of the founders of the initiative for Latin America Community Engagement in LACE. And I'm a very proud resident of Howell County, such a supportive community. After this incredibly challenging year and with the proximity of the holiday season, I could not stop thinking about the COVID-19 victim. Their families and their struggles. The losses communities faced near and far and all the goodbyes unspoken. I then, I then approached the library system proposing organizing an event that would send a message that we are a very diverse community in Howard County are in this together. And I would like to take a moment here to thank the library team for their vision and their dedication. Thank you very much. So remembering together this event was created to help us feel our deep connection to each other. And to offer some healing to all of us. So without further ado, and as a result of the many beautiful and different hands working together, Let's start 
or event. Let's start our event and listen in each other's reflection and in, solid in solidarity on others near far. In gratitude, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. You could be doing anything this evening, but you are contributing to our connectedness, which is invaluable during any holiday season, but especially poignant during this holiday season. As we come to close of a year where many of us have felt a little bit more disconnected, where we felt isolated, where during the solstice, there is a recognition and a reflection of feeling sometimes a little colder and a little darker. However, I wanna personally thank, on behalf of all the residents of Howard County, Tonya and the library system, Patricia and Inlace for helping to bring us together, for helping to remind us all that we don't have to be alone, that this world can be a warmer, brighter place. And even though we've lost some of those bright lights along the way and things seem a bit dimmer, remembering helps enliven and remembering our loved ones helps them live forever. This is a challenging and difficult time for all of us and losing people that we care about impacts us on a personal level, a community level and a world level, not just in current, but also future generations. The people who we remember are those who might give a little comforting word, might have created or invented that next important thing, might have written that poetry that would bring more comfort to our hearts. But in a time of mourning, let us also remember that they would want us to celebrate life and to embrace an even brighter future. So during this holiday season, let us embrace hope. Let us remember and let us embrace life. Thank you so much and please be well and be blessed. Uh, thank you, Tonya Akins. Thank you, Patricia Silva. And thank you very much, Dr. Calvin Ball. Um, a number of organizations and individuals helped us put tonight's event together and spread the word. And we want to show their names and thank them in this moment as we're starting. Is the Chinese American Parent Association, Columbia Community Care, Columbia Housing Center, Community Allies of Rainbow Youth, or CARI, the Community Action Council of Howard County, Conexiones, FERN, the Foreign Born Information and Referral Network, who is providing tonight's interpretation uh, with support from the county government, First Baptist Church of Guilford, the Indian Cultural Association, Howard Community College, Howard County Chinese School, Howard County General Hospital, Howard County Latino, Leadership Howard County, and St. John's United Church. Thank you, everyone. We'd also like to take a moment and acknowledge everyone present. If you are able 
and comfortable putting your video on, um, we'd really invite you to do so to be seen for a moment as we start this event together. Um, we'd also, and we're gonna switch to a uh, gallery view in a moment so you can see everyone present. Um, we'd also invite you to put your name and if you're here remembering anyone in particular um, into the chat right now. So we're gonna take a few moments and do that. I'd like to say too that we really want to honor and I think a lot of people will reflect on this that this has presented losses and challenges of many kinds and that some people are struggling more economically. Some people are struggling more in terms of mental health um, that this uh, moment has exerted a huge range of, of difficulties, pressures and losses on folks and we are here including all of that and honoring all of that. So we're going to have a mix of videos, music, and reflection tonight. Um, following that, those kind of prepared remarks, we're going to have some time for participant um, comments. So in the interest of hearing from a bunch of people, if you feel moved to speak, we'd ask you to keep it in about a minute. Um, and you can state in the chat um, at any time if you're interested in speaking later. And my wonderful colleague, Nancy Target, will be keeping track of that. Um, we'll go in the order people volunteer. Um, so our first uh, offering tonight is a beautiful video made by Jeffrey Baker at the library system of uh, picturing these remembrance trees. So this joint effort between the library and Enlace has included for the past two weeks, a designated tree at each library branch and an invitation to the community to come with a piece of ribbon or a piece of fabric and a message along the themes of remembrance, connection, or hope, um, and to tie those messages to those trees. Um, so you will see some images of those trees that have been occurring uh, at each of our branches. I think we are going to try that again to get you the sound that goes with those.
So a big thank you to Jeffrey Baker for that uh, beautiful video and a big thank you to all the library staff who helped make that happen. Um, and to all the community members who made it happen. Yeah. So we're now going to hear from our first uh, speaker of the evening, um, of our speaking collective that's about to occur, uh, Shella Khan from Dar al Taqwa Islamic Center. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all. My name is Shala Khan and I'm from Dal Taqwa Islamic Center. Certainly this year, uh, this has been a very difficult year. Muslim community like all others in Howard County were equally impacted by this pandemic. Even uh, many in our community lost their jobs, got sick and tragically few lost their lives. Mosque remained closed. Even today, we could not offer our Friday or congregational prayers. However, this community has also given us the opportunity to help people all around. Allah says in the Quran, he is the one who created death and life in order to test you which of you is best in deeds. And he is almighty and all forgiving. In response to the Muslim in Howard County and adjacent counties, we uh, all came together to help people in need. We had members making masks and distributing them free. And we have many grocery deliveries in Howard County and Montgomery County and uh, Baltimore County. And we regular drive through food packages and uh, we are giving dinner, to, uh, dinner pickups also. Uh, we all Muslims here, are standing together with you, with our neighbors, and with our, with our whole community. And uh, I'll end this message uh, with the hope from, from one of the words in the Quran, that your Lord has not forsaken you. And I pray for all of my brothers and sisters in my community that may Allah protect us all, cure our sick, and lift this calamity from us. Amen. Thank you so much, Shala. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Dr. Patricia Pugh of Howard County General Hospital. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say that um, we're here with you. We started this journey uncertain of what was ahead, but we remained and continue to remain committed to seeing it through. This journey has been very much an unprecedented one, uh, one with uh, more rocky than smooth roads, uh, one where we've had more questions at times than answers, one where we've experienced more losses than gains and for many, much more grief than joy. And along this journey, we have been able to bear witness to the effects of the looming threat of COVID on our community, whether a person receives the diagnosis and quickly improves, or a person receives the diagnosis and struggles for months to get better. We have all come to know the terror that accompanies this diagnosis. And I want you to know that we see you. We see the frustration and we see the fear, the fear of being hospitalized and feeling alone. Uh, through the use of technology, many of us have been able to bridge the gap of separation caused by this disease. Whether it's FaceTime or Zoom, many of us have been able to connect family members at home with their hospitalized loved ones. And we're able to see the relief on the faces of our patients when they are able to hear your voices and see your faces, even if it's through a screen and for those with more complicated courses, we continue to see the courage and the tenacity that you summon as you start your long road to recovery. And we know that lives will forever be changed. We know that for many, the pain may seem insurmountable, but we will take courage and anchor our hope in the overwhelming humanity the connectedness and resilience of our community. Today and every day, we honor the lives lost and will forever hold them in remembrance with you. Thank you. 
Dr. Pugh, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have a beautiful musical offering uh, from Sarbari Gengopatye of the Ardana School of Music in Clarksville. Hello everyone. I thank the Howard County Library System, INLES, the Initiative for Latin American Community Engagement, and the Indian Cultural Association of Howard County for inviting me to join this community memorial for the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Sharbari Gangopadhyay from Clarksville, Maryland. Today, I'll be singing an Indian song in Hindi in remembrance for our loved ones we have lost in the pandemic. Thank you. Bulina, Mosibulina, 
want to, again, thank um, Ms. Sabari Gangopadhyay, and we want to thank the Indian Cultural Association for connecting her um, with us for this event. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. Alvin Zhang of Kaiser Permanente. Dr. Zhang? Um, give this one more moment. All right, can you guys hear me? Excellent, yes. Very good. Hi, uh, so uh, my name is Alvin Zhang. I'm a cardiologist uh, from Kaiser Permanente. I'm also serving as uh, uh, the chairman of the board at Asian American Healthcare Center uh, in Howard County. Uh, so uh, first, uh, thank you so much to have me here and share my experience and uh, reflection uh, during this uh, you know, COVID pandemic. Uh, so as a cardiologist and also physician and also community members, so I've seen both sides uh, of the struggles from both physician communities and also from uh, our general communities and patients. So, uh, so there's old saying, uh, the worst time always bring out the best from the people. So really I want to share is I've seen all of this best from our communities, uh, physicians and even patients. So uh, I want to share some experience, uh, you know, I had. Uh, over their past nine months. Uh, at one time, when we have the first wave of COVID-19 comes in, uh, our hospital uh, was really overwhelmed. So our colleagues, hospitalists are really overwhelmed. So when they have a hard time, so all the specialists, including cardiologists, including dermatologists, even gynecologists, so we'll rotate in, okay? So we'll rotate into the hospital to help our hospitalists and then to take their work and, uh, you know, because they are really overwhelmed with COVID-19. And, uh, you know, during this process, some of my colleagues, that, like hospitalists, uh, infected with COVID-19. So they will be out of the surface for like two or three weeks. But once they get better, they will back into the surface and take care of those patients right away. So it's really touching. And then sometimes we're joking when I see my colleagues, orthopedics coming to take care of the patient. I said, when was the last time you take an internal medicine patient? He said, maybe when I was a medical student but that doesn't matter. So they all come in to chip in. So it's really touching. And then it's really worked as a collective effort uh, to help us to get through this crisis. Uh, the other things I want to comment on is as also a community advocates, you know, from the Chinese American communities in Howard County, I also really touched by the community effort uh, to donate, try to get all uh, the resources, especially when we're running very short of PPEs. And uh, so, you know, they will send us all those things through different channels to Howard County General Hospital, Kaiser Permanente, Johns Hopkins Hospital. So as a physician, you know, we work on the front line and all those materials will help us. So I was really touched, you know, by those efforts from our communities. And the last thing I want to say is even our patients, you know, when we, when we were challenged, you know, by this unusual, uh, you know, COVID pandemic, and uh, when we have so many COVID-19 patients in the hospital, which it was struggling with the life, and uh, sometimes when we have to go into the hospital to rotate out, you know, the, the, the hospital who are overwhelmed, and then for those patients who are relatively healthy, and then they normally will come in to see us in the clinic, they would understand. They would say, well, you know, we're not coming in right now. You know, we'll just, the telephone follow up or we can wait a few months. So that would give us the limited resources, be able to dedicate more to the hospital. So really, I want to appreciate all those physicians uh, and not only physicians and also patients, which, you know, they're understanding. And then, you know, we all work together as a communities. And then, you know, that's the only way we can get through this. So we have learned a lot 
from this nine month. And this COVID-19 is not over yet. So there's not a big wave comes in right now. The hospital is packed again. So our schedule keep changing, we'll keep adapting. But I think by working together, I think we will be able to get through the, all of this. And again, I thank you so much for these opportunities. And I, I think by working together, we'll see the end of the tunnels. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Zhang. Uh, we will now hear from Mariana Medeiros from the Initiative for Latin American Community Engagement. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much um, for having me here today. Um, it's amazing to feel um, like I'm in community with people during this time. And so I'm really grateful that we have this space together and this time together. I wanted to offer a couple of thoughts about my experience with mental health during this pandemic and those who I work with. Um, currently, I'm a, a master's of social work student, I'm hoping to um, do some good after, after this degree. Um, and I've spent a lot of time this semester working with youth um, and oftentimes youth who have needed a lot of support, um, both emotionally and, you know, just with basic needs. And sort of across the board between myself, my peers, and my, um, the folks I've worked with, um, I've kind of across the board have seen feelings of hopelessness, you know, isolation, having trouble um, staying motivated and focused, um, and then massive concerns about personal financial stability and even family financial stability. Um, and so I think at this point, all that I really wanna offer is that it's really important that we stay safely checking in on each other, safely communicating, um, and especially for those who are the most vulnerable in our worlds, um, they can really use our support and it can be something as little as, you know, a text or a call or a FaceTime call. I think sometimes um, it helps to remind ourselves that there are things that are possible right now. Um, and finally, I think um, the best way that we can care for others as well right now is to take care of ourselves. And so if I could just offer a couple of strategies that have really worked with both myself, my peers, and the folks I've worked with. Um, journaling has been a big thing, having a space to write everything down and um, reflect, go inwards, right? We're in the solstice and here's winter. So an invitation to go inward as it is, but a space where reflection is possible. Um, and then another um, strategy that I use daily and I don't know if you all have heard of it, but it's a grounding technique and it asks you to identify five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can touch, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. And working through um, some of those steps can be really helpful in grounding down when we're feeling overwhelmed. And, um, yeah, I, I'm really grateful to have a space and a moment with you all and just offer that um, there are ways that we can take care of ourselves and each other, even if this has been a hard time mental health wise. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mariana. Next, we will hear um, from McKenna Burns briefly before hearing her sing. Um, so let me help you, McKenna, to do that. Hello, everyone. My name is McKenna Burns, and I'm the program manager of Columbia Community Care. Um, this song is dedicated to all our volunteers and the entire Howard County community for the love and support you have shown to our organization and to each other. Happy holidays. Thank you. 
We want you to hear McKenna loudly. <laughs> We're gonna start that again.
Another thank you from McKenna for sharing uh, Send Your Love. We're going to end this section with Pastor Tyrone P. Jones IV of the First Baptist Church of Guilford. Good evening to everyone. Um, I want to thank uh, all of our community partners for gathering together for this COVID-19 reflection and remembrance for all of the loved ones that have gone on from us. You know, we're gathered here as a community of mourners during a time in which it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. So how do you deal with the heaviness and weight of loss while yet trying to hold on to some semblance of the season and hope. In my faith tradition, uh, hope is always on the horizon when we have faith in God. And so I pray that this prayer poem uh, is an adaptation from a poem that I received just today uh, that blessed me so, and I want to share it with you. And I'm titling this Hope and Heaven. Those who have left us are saying to us this holiday season, I see countless trees around the world below with tiny lights like heaven stars reflecting on the snow. The sight from here is so spectacular. Please wipe away your tears. I'm spending time this Christmas season with my Lord so near. I know how much you miss me. I see the pain inside your heart, but I'm not so far away. We'll really, we aren't far apart. So be happy for me, dear ones. You know I hold you dear. And be glad I'm spending Christmas with my Lord this year. I send you each a spiritual gift from my heavenly home above. I send you each a memory of my faith and undying love. Please love and keep each other as our heavenly father said do. For I can't count the blessings of love he has for each of you. So this holiday season, I'm sending you this note. Know that I'm okay where I am. Take this as a sign of hope. Amen. Thank you very, very much, Pastor Jones. Um, we now hit a point where we can open the floor for public participation. Um, if you are interested in speaking at this moment, um, please enter that into the chat. Give us another moment. Really, um, everybody's welcome. Every message is welcome. If you feel like sharing a message in the chat versus verbalizing it, that is also very welcome. Okay. Um, thank you to everyone who's participated tonight. Thank you for everybody who has participated tonight. I think by, by being here, um, as a number of speakers have said, we are enacting community together um, in a time in which it is very important to do that. Um, we will be posting this video and we'll share with those who are here um, when it is publicly available. And we hope that people can continue to benefit from tonight um, as this event lives on online. Um, 
again, we're really grateful to have been in this space with you to honor those who have died during the pandemic, those who are struggling more because of it, and to assert our connectedness and community. Um, ask you to get ready for a beautiful closing. Um, it's going to feature music by Gabriel Hightower, the Howard County Art Council's 2020 Rising Star, who asked us to recognize him as a member of the Howard Progressive Project. Gabriel's going to speak briefly about his piece, which is premiering here tonight. Thank you, Katie. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gabriel Hightower, and I'm a second year master's student studying cello performance at Carnegie Mellon University. The music you're about to hear tonight is, from, is my arrangement of the second movement of Antonin Dvorak's New World Symphony. I arranged it for four cellos, and I'm playing all of the parts that you'll be hearing tonight. I would like to dedicate this piece to those that have been impacted by the pandemic. Thank you once again and enjoy. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for that um, additional information. We asked folks to attend tonight, if possible, with a candle um, or a flashlight. The flashlight on your phone could be just fine. Um, so as a few people have alluded to, um, tonight is the winter solstice. It's the darkest day in a very challenging year. Um, we wanna close honoring the light um, in every person and the collective light in our community. Looking forward to more light ahead. So we're going to light our candles, turn off our room lights and have a final meditative close in which you hear Gabriel's amazing music and have a chance to both reflect and see um, the community present here tonight. Um, after his piece ends, you'll see a final slide and we're gonna end this meeting in silence. Um, we recommend that you pick gallery view for this so you can see the other participants and to turn your uh, camera on if possible. I can see some people are getting dark and getting ready already. Thank you. Um, if you need any help getting to gallery view, in most cases, it is a grid icon in the top right of a computer screen, or you can um, swipe left if you're joining us on your phone. So I'd ask that you get your candle ready, and if possible, place it in view of your screen. I'm gonna hold mine up. Oh. <laughs> Um, and the music will start shortly. Um, thank you again for being part of this.
Thank you all. Um, be safe. Be well.